So, a lot of people wonder these days, what is the best Marvel book on the shelves right now? And a lot of people point to one comic in particular, and that is none other than Al Ewing's The Immortal Hulk. And I gotta agree with them, folks. Uh, so, Universe, this video is all about The Immortal Hulk, why it's great, and why you should be picking it up. Now, issue 25 is the end of the run, apparent end of this storyline, but apparently there's going to be more to come, because Marvel just can't go over 25 issues these days, uh, or just they can't help themselves with this renumbering. So, the big thing with this story, uh, the big thing with this video is you guys can probably pick out comics and trade, check it out, and uh, go, you know, go read this. First, that's, that's just neither here nor there. You guys just need to read... Uh, the Immortal Hulk. But you guys are probably wondering, why? Why, Zilla? Why do we need to read The Immortal Hulk? Um, even if you aren't a Hulk fan, you need to read this. Now, the reason as to why you should read The Immortal Hulk, um, I'll tell you. First and foremost, this has probably been one of the best Hulk runs since, I don't know, uh, Greg Pox run. And even then, Greg Pox run towards the end kind of went a, went a little everywhere. Um, this I would hold up with the long uh, Peter David run, and it's funny that I mentioned the Peter David run because this t takes so much of Peter David's run, and as well as Greg po the stuff Greg Pop did in his Hulk run, and really plays with it. He really, um, Al Ewing really plays with a lot of the comics in here, a lot of the, uh, like, a lot of stuff you wouldn't think Hulk would run into, but the thing is, is that Hulk has, you know, the Hulk has done, like, Heaven and Hell stuff. Um, he has done this kind of horror novel, uh, horror stuff in the past. So this isn't too far away from what the Hulk has been at all. Al Ewing, like, yeah, he makes massive callbacks to the Greg Pak and, um, the, um, uh, the, you know, the Peter David run, you know, the, um, and he makes references to even, like, uh, several of the runs, like the John Byrne run. It's very cool when he can do these major deep cuts in the Hulk, uh, storyline. It is so cool to see these just major deep cuts in the Hulk story, you know, in the Hulk, uh, universe. The other major thing with this uh, run that I would highly suggest for people is that this comic is, if you are a horror fan, yeah, I would give this a look because this has got some body horror in here and the artwork in here um, is just dark. It's, it's vibrant yet dark at the same time. Like, there's, there's darkness in it, but at the same time there's like a... There's like a... I guess you could say, like, vi you know, like, there is brightness to the darkness. Like, it, it's a neat contrast between the two. And when I say body horror, oh my god, I would love to show some of you guys on here, but I feel like this move, this video would get demonetized if I showed you um, half the stuff that goes on in these, uh, in these comics, because there are just some straight up, like, straight up scenes from the thing. Like, there's one scene where they... It, um, where Hulk is fighting the Absorbing Man, and the Absorbing Man, yeah, be literally becomes the creature from the thing. I'm not even joking. Like, it's, it's horror. The moment I saw that, I was like, this is horrifying. This is generally horrif uh, horrifying. And again, it's so weird to see that the Hulk would deal with stuff like Heaven and Hell, but at the same time, it's not too far off from, uh, from stuff in, the in previous runs have done. Um, and not only that, connecting with a lot of the stuff with the with gamma radiation and connecting it with a more supernatural vibe. You have to remember that there are some very supernatural overtones with the Hulk. There have always been supernatural overtones with the Hulk throughout, you know, throughout history, without the comic history. Remember that Stanley really based the Hulk off of two major, you know, movie monsters, um, or novel monsters, I should say. Uh, the uh, the Frankenstein monster and Mr. Hyde. That was the main. Those were the two major things that uh, really were the driving force to creating the Hulk. You know, those were the two major ones. And um, yeah, again, they're they're monsters made in science. But we always kind of uh, associate Frankenstein's monster and Mr. Hyde 
with, you know, kind of a magic. And for some reason, we, we go with a more magic or supernatural vibe with them. But really, it's more of monsters made of science. And again, the Hulk really plays that angle. There's also, of course, harkening back to the Stan Lee and Jack Kirby days of the Hulk, is that in those comics, the Hulk only, like, much like in what's going on in Al Ewing's run, is that the Hulk only came out at night, like, kind of like a werewolf kind of thing. Um, and that, again, plays with the psyche. And that's the other thing, is that much like in the Peter David run, Al Ewing's Immortal Hulk run plays with, um, plays with the psyche of the Hulk, which, you know, you don't, you really haven't seen since the Peter David run, where the Hulk is, you know, the Hulk, or should I say Hulks, are kind of not really at war with Banner anymore. It's more like Banner has accepted it and is now, you know, more willing to work with the Hulk in, in a way. Because even he knows, yeah, there's no escaping this. I can't stop what I am. I just need to keep going in, you know, maybe I'll die, maybe I won't, or maybe the Hulk will win. Who knows? I just, I, I can't fight. Any I can't fight anymore, guys. I really can't fight it. So that's the big thing with this story, is that um, it, what's also cool is that this is something that, you know, no one has really done since the David run of Hulk, where Banner has not just one Hulk in his mind, it's multi, you know, the Hulk just varies between writer um, of how smart he is. In here, it's like, yeah, there are multiple Hulks, and Banner can cycle through um, which Hulk he can become, and that'll be it. So I like that. I really like it. And again, he b he brings up, you know, the Devil Hulk. That's the main Hulk we deal with, is the Devil Hulk from, uh, again, David's run. And we also get the return of Joe Fixit, in a way. Um, again, the Grey Hulk. All the, uh, and I like how, I really dig how Ewing, Al Ewing is using uh, Joe Fixit in here, just making him Banner, just mentally, he's Joe Fixit, but on the outside, he's Banner. So I, so I really like that. And again, I like how we've this uh, the Devil Hulk is our main character. Where yeah, he's a bad dude, but at the same time, he's like yeah, I'm doing this all for ba you know. Banner says that I'm the devil, but really, I'm not. I'm doing this all for him. And I love that that moment in Hulk in Hell where um, the Devil Hulk is like yeah, I you know I'm mad, but I really just I care about you, Banner. You're me, and I'm you, and I've, that's never changed. Um, so I dug, I dug that they're doing this dichotomy between Hulk, the most dangerous of all the Hulks with uh, Banner and making this kind of dichotomy where they're really just, where, you know, Banner and him are really truly connected. And I really like that. I really like how that plays out. And going back, you know, going back to the body horror stuff, oh my god. Like, I've also been loving how they've incorporated, you know, Rick the return of Rick Jones after his death from Secret Empire, as well as making... Um, bringing back Betty Ross and having her not only get Hulk, you know, gamma powers again, but making her the Harpy again and making her like a She-Hulk, a red She-Hulk Harpy hybrid. That was really awesome. Um, I don't, you know, there's a whole thing behind that and I really, it's really cool how they do the whole red Harpy thing and I really don't want to spoil it, but it's been so cool. It was so cool. Um, and, oh man, there's just so much in here. There's so much to really unpack and look at and examine. There could be, there's just so much in here. Just, um, you know, Ali Wing has been doing nothing but uh, making hit after hit after hit with this Hulk comic. And I can't wait to see how it ends. Because they did say it's the end of this storyline is at issue 25. But I don't know if they're going to, I don't know if they're going to continue or if this is going to be the end of Immortal Hulk. But yeah. For all intents and purposes, this is probably one of the best Hulk runs in a long time. Not to discredit like Greg Pak's run or anyone else's, but this has been one of the best Hulk runs ever. And I'd love to see Ali Wing continue to write uh, more stuff with this version of the Hulk. Um, this is this, this horror not just a horror novel. You know, one chap and each chapter is just more scary than the next. Um, so I really cannot recommend The Immortal Hulk more than I can. If you haven't been reading it, I'd say go out, buy the trades. You will not be disappointed. The first volume, I will say, um, really comes off as like Tales from the Crypt kind of stories, which I really dug of making the first six issues kind of like Tales from the Crypt, where the Hulk goes out, kills somebody, or punishes them, 
through gamma radiation. Um, it really, it, it's not until the fifth and sixth issue that it really, like, the story kicks in, but the first four issues are kind of like that, where they're, they, you see minor things get set up, but they're not the forefront. It's more like just Hulk going around hurting people, but the uh, connected stories don't happen until the two-part story. And again, it brings up um, another aspect of Banner, his father, and how they utilize him is spectacular. So yeah, once again, um, just go, if you haven't been reading it, I'd say go out and check out the back issues or go.